we have a tube of length L and radius R. So let's say this is the tube of length L and radius R. Through this tube, some liquid is flowing and from the axis, if you go to the distance R, the velocity of the liquid is varying by this relation. And you can see this makes sense because when small r becomes capital R, so at this point, velocity of the liquid is zero, which should happen. Anyway, we need to find the volume flow per unit time, the kinetic energy of the liquid which is inside the tube, frictional force exerted on the tube by the liquid and pressure difference at the ends of the tube. So let us start with volume flow rate. So since the velocity is increasing with changing radius, we'll take a ring. So the water that is flowing through this ring, the velocity of that water is constant. So we'll find the small volume flow rate through this ring and then we'll integrate to find the total volume flow rate. So this is that ring through which the water is, the liquid is uh, going out with the velocity this. So volume flow rate we know is velocity into cross sectional area. So we'll write that. So a small volume flow rate through the ring D of dV by dt. So is equal to velocity into area. So velocity is this and area of the ring is 2 pi r dr. So we need to find the total volume flow rate. So that we'll do by integrating and limits of r will be from 0 to r. We do that and get our answer. Kinetic energy of the liquid. So again, we'll consider this cylindrical element. So we'll find the kinetic energy of that cylindrical element of that ring and then again integrate to find the total kinetic energy. So kinetic energy of liquid in cylindrical shell element is equal to half dmv square. So V is again this and dm is volume of that liquid into rho. So rho into 2 pi r dr into L. So again, we'll put the limits from 0 to r and this will be our answer. Now the frictional force exerted on the tube. So here, since they have given the viscosity, we are going to use our standard formula that is for the viscous force and it is eta A dV by dr. So we are supposed to find the frictional force on the edge. So on the edge, small r will be capital R. So let's write the, so basically we need to find the viscous force when small r is capital R. So let's write that. So eta A, A will be 2 pi r L. So we are talking about all the lateral surface area. So frictional force is acting on lateral surface area. Into dv by dr. So we know velocity as a function of r. So we'll just differentiate that to get dv by dr. So we differentiate this and we'll get this. And because we are supposed to find the frictional force on capital R, so if you put the value of R as R, these things will get cancelled and what you will get is 4 pi eta L V naught, which is independent of R. So quite a sur surprising result. You can take a tube of any radius and if the velocity variation is like this, then the frictional force on the tube is constant not constant, I mean, I mean independent of the radius of the tube. Now in the D part, we need to find the pressure difference at the ends. Now, of course, pressure will be same on the whole area because the flow of the liquid, perpendicular to the flow of liquid, pressure is same. So let's say the difference in pressure is delta P. So that is the force that is acting on this liquid inside that is delta P into A and retarding force, which we already calculated the frictional retarding force on the edge. That is this four pi eta L V naught. So these are the only two forces on the liquid. And we also know that the velocity of any particle at a distance R. So it does not change because R, if R is fixed, then velocity of that particle becomes constant. That means 
the each particles if you take any particle in this liquid its momentum is not changing that means the whole liquid's momentum is also constant so let's read that let pressure difference be delta p as every particle's velocity is constant momentum of whole volume is constant too so if momentum is constant that means net force is zero and we have seen the only forces are these two so the frictional force at radius r is equal to delta p into a and delta p therefore is fr by a we know f at r is 4 pi eta l v naught so solving that we will get our answer so this is one way to calculate delta p second we can use second method is by using poiseuille's equation which gives the variation of delta p which gives the relation of delta p and volume flow rate so volume flow rate we already calculated in the first part that is this so if we put that volume flow rate so this is the equation poiseuille's equation dv by dt is equal to pi r4 delta p by 8 eta l so r is the radius of the tube delta p is pressure difference across the tube eta is viscosity l is length of the tube so d by dt we calculate it in a part we put that so this is pi r4 delta p by 8 eta l we just simplify that and we get delta p to be same as this all right